All right, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Drum Smack. We are live in Shirley, Massachusetts at the beautiful Bull Run Restaurant and Concert Hall, established in 1974. And we are with one of the Boston local drummers, Rory Walsh. And we're going to be talking to him about what's going on up here on the uh, Northeast Coast. And he's going to tell us a little bit about um, all the kind of gigs and stuff he's been doing. So please welcome to Drum Smack, Rory Walsh. How you doing, man? I can't complain. It's been a great night. You guys sounded great tonight. Yeah, did you like that? The uh, Pete Anderson trio? Absolutely. I love the little Korg hand bass, the left hand bass. Yeah. I haven't seen that in a long time. Have you have you played with uh played with a key bass player before? I have. Um I really liked it. It tends to make me play real sparse. You know, you want to hook into the bass. You know, it's there's not the elasticity, of course, of having a real upright or electric player, but hey man, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun. Mike Murphy actually plays the bumpers on our show and been playing with him for about a year now. And, you know, when it's locked, it's, there's nothing better because then it's just, it's just all feel at that point. Absolutely. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, you're, you're living in the Boston area, right? And tell us a little bit about some of the bands and stuff that you're working with currently here. I have a band called the Jack Leg Preachers, which is the jacklegpreachers.com. It's jazz, blues, funk, and soul. It's kind of like Lowell George era Little Feet meets The Meters, meets Early Almonds, meets Derek Trucks Band. Um, two young guitarists, uh, Jake Pardee and Eric Reardon play with us. Also, Jeff Tanzer, who's 57. Uh, he had played with Coco Taylor and Bonnie Raitt. He is up here. He kind of sounds like early Mark Knopfler and Jeff Skunk Baxter and Denny Diaz from the early Steely Dan stuff. Uh, the singer is wonderful. His brother, uh, the singer we have, Brian O'Connor, his foster brother, uh, whose name is escaping me right now, uh, he plays with Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys, uh, Stuart, who, why am I forgetting Stuart's name on an interview? <laughs> but you would know who it is. He's the percussionist and harmony vocalist. And I've been really lucky. I'm not from Boston originally. That's right. You're from uh, Europe. Is that right? Well, I was born in New York, and I was two months old. We went back to Ireland. Oh, okay. And then I came back when I was 16, and we had gone back and forth my whole life. My father's from Scotland. My mother's from Ireland. I'm the only American born in my family. I'm the youngest of three. My oldest brother was a phenomenal upright and electric player. He had got a lot of good gigs in Europe with Freddie Hubbard and Don Cherry, oh, wow. and that's how I kind of finagled into their bands. I and, see. uh the funny thing was, Jerry was very ill when I played with him. You would never have known. You would never have known how ill he was. He never complained. He didn't look unhealthy. I don't know what was wrong or what eventually happened, but I got to play with some phenomenal musicians through him. So yeah. I, I've been lucky my whole life, really. Yeah, so um, before, let's, let's go back to the beginning a little bit. And like when you're coming up, I mean, tell us a little bit, I mean, tell us a little bit about who your influences were when you're, when you're over in Europe. I mean, and, and just kind of like, you remember a moment or uh, maybe seeing a live show that kind of just like, hey, man, I want to play the drums gotcha. or, you know what I mean? My mother uh, was a big fan. She took me to Blackpool, England, which is on the west coast of England, to see the Blind Boys of Alabama and the Mighty Clouds of Joy, a gospel group. And the musicians with them, I can't remember their names, but they were phenomenal. Phenomenal. Also, my mother knew Art Blakey and Sarah Vaughn very well, because my mother had a friend who booked the Cork Jazz Festival, which was the first and probably the only jazz festival in Ireland uh, going for years. And my mother had known these people, and she loved Dinah Washington. So I got to see these old videos she had. Also, she would play me Eddie Arnold, uh, you know, Big Rock Candy Mountain, his version. So there was no, when you're little, there's no borders, you know, in what you're listening to. I'd have to say Elvin Jones, Art Blakey for jazz. I loved uh, Richie Albright with Waylon Jennings as a drummer. I thought he was absolutely great. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, Patsy Cline. At the same time, I loved Little Feet, the meters. I mean, Ziggy Model East, I feel, you know, the only thing I've never liked I've never understood the American predilection for Led Zeppelin. It, it always confused me. I love really? Bonham and I love Jones. Yeah. The other two I could do without. <laughs> yeah, you know? And live. That's just, interesting. Like, yeah, just live, if you be honest, you can track 13 guitars, but when you play live, when Song Remains the Same came out in England, Scotland, and Ireland, people were chucking it out the window. It was like, 
God, they're terrible live. Yeah, that's a terrible live. I mean, it got panned. People I didn't like it. And I'm thinking, well, you know, if it was a bit more honestly done live, and I love Bonham. I love Jones. I can't say enough about them. But the other two, I'm just like, wow, there's something to miss here. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, in my opinion. That's interesting. Well, you know, coming to America, back to America as a reverse immigrant, You've had Ziggy Modelist, you had Smokey Johnson, you had these guys who played for Little Richard who are probably one of the greatest bands ever. And I thought to myself, why would you want to get regurgitation from across the ocean? And I know that can be great cross-pollination, but it also can be dishonest, you know what I mean? It's, right. it's how I always felt about Ginger Baker. I always felt he was like the Art Blakey or Max Roach of Britain. He was that level, where he was that intelligent, what he played always made musical sense. And as much as I love Keith Moon and John Bonham, I'm like, lads, it's a different level. It's like saying, you know, Tommy Ramone is the same leg as Buddy Rich. I'm sorry. There's a difference there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I have no afraid of saying my opinions. If, if arrows get slung at me, I don't care. <laughs> 